Hello and welcome to Knife Chats. Um, just starting off and uh, I thought, uh, well, if you remember last time I talked, I mentioned this drawer here, or jar here, about uh, putting money in there whenever uh, I had uh, more than 200 uh, visitors views within uh, uh, the first 24 hours of doing a uh, chat. And uh, well, actually, not a single chat last week went over 200 views in the first 24 hours. And so I rethought that. And basically what I'm going to do now is um, if a chat goes over 100, I will throw in a coin. And if it hits 200 or more, I will throw in uh, two coins. Uh, so making that up, every one of my videos last week went over uh, 100 in the first 24 hours. So one, two, three, four. So we're four coins closer to getting that uh, the all the coins in the jar so that I can go and pick up a uh, Sodbuster Junior by case to send out to folks. Um, still got that big stack in the back there to drop in, but once I get them all in there, we will be uh, moving on to a Sodbuster Junior and a giveaway, and I will do that during a Knife Chats Live. Um, my bet is even if I just continue to get uh, 100 views uh, per video, I will have this done within oh, four or five weeks tops before I start getting uh, enough money to go out and get that uh, Sodbuster Junior and then later we'll look at other knives that I'll be getting. Um, I thought I'd start off by that question that everybody asks all the time. What are you carrying today? And uh, you see it in front of you. And if you were to have asked me this six months ago, it would have been the same knives. The uh, Dragonfly 2, the uh, Swiss Army Knife, the Victorinox Signature. And the Signature is basically a classic SD that has uh, a little retractable ink pen in the handle. Uh, I always swap out the... Uh, the pair of uh, tweezers with a toothpick. And then uh, my Rough Rider um, uh, large toothpick. This is always with me also. And then this is something that is kept inside my bag that goes with me, my day bag. And um, it's basically a, um, a little tackle box. And what is in there is and it's waterproof, which is the other important part of it. And what I have in there is the other knife I always talk about. Uh, my Explorer with plus scales. Now anyone who knows the Victorinox Explorer is basically your Spartan, but it has um, a Phillips screwdriver mounted on the end instead of on the back. The Tinker would have, uh, the Tinker would have the uh, Phillips here that would pop out and you would have uh, no corkscrew. But I like this one with the corkscrew because I wear glasses and it gives you the little eyeglass uh, screw that you can put into the uh, corkscrew. So I have something for repairing my eyeglasses. And the other thing that the Explorer has is the um, scissors, which I use all the time too. I oh, haven't got it all the way in there yet. Uh, and I swapped out the uh, regular scales on it with plus scales so that I have another That's what happens when you clip your nails before you come online uh, another ink pen in here and so that's in there along with band-aids and other things and uh, I have a Sharpener here. This is uh, by Sharp Owl and you know, it's one of those pull-through sharpeners, but it also has a ferro rod in there and it has a uh, a sharpening rod there. And if you notice, that's for sharpening hooks. So it's a really nice uh, 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 little sharpening tool. And this end here is a whistle. So pretty good whistle too. So I've got a whistle in there, some uh, hand sanitizer. I mentioned this before. I've got the uh, my uh, manicure set in here. And this is a little... Uh, one of those multi-tools that you have on there, shaped like a fish. 
and it's got every kind of imaginable thing you can imagine on there. Uh, your bottle cap opener, your uh, Phillips screwdriver, that's a little box cutter, uh, and you've got a uh, two Phillips head screwdrivers in here too that swivel around. And so I've got that, and then I've got a small multi-tool in here from Cabela's also. So all of that's in there. I'm going to have to repack it. I'm not going to waste time now. Uh, new knives for the week. Only two to show. I've got a few other ones, but I'm waiting till next week. Um, and that's the autism awareness ones. If you are familiar with me on Instagram, you've already seen these because I posted them right away. These are a uh, SMKW, Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive. I believe they were um, designed by um, Brian Wilhoit over there. And I've got the both the Classic and the Tinker in it. And um, um, I know people who suffer from autism and have children who suffer from it. So uh, this was near and dear to me. So I went ahead and picked up the Autism Awareness Knives, both of them, because I really liked them. I'm not going to go into great detail about... Um, I've got a lot of Swiss Army Knives, but I don't do a lot of videos on them because, frankly... Um, a tinker is a tinker. Uh, the only difference on this one is the scales, and the scales look really good on here, but you can find all sorts of videos on Swiss Army knives, and they all pretty much sound alike, and I would be saying the same thing over and over and over because the build quality of a Swiss Army knife really never changes. They are solid. They're well-made. You either like them or you don't like them. I happen to like them quite a bit, so I've got quite a few of them. But I don't do a lot of videos on them because um, other than a change in the um, a handle material, I mean, this is just a regular Tinker and a regular Classic SD. Um, but I really like them because uh, of the autism awareness thing. Um, other thing I wanted to talk about today, though, uh, the biggie is um, some knife designs that I wish I would see come back. Um, and... We all are familiar with uh, a lot of companies are coming out with new knife designs, new traditional pattern knives all the time. But there are some really great ones out there from the past that you just don't see enough of. And um, to start off with, I'm going to look at this one here. Um, if anyone knows what this is, it's it's uh, a Stanhope um, uh, bartender knife. And these things just look really cool. These are, they, they came out way back in the... Uh, late 1800s the 1890s or so uh and uh the first ones were promotional knives for uh budweiser beer company so um uh anheuser bush uh actually partnered with uh camillus the guy from camillus i uh, can't remember his name right in that right away but uh to get these knives made and uh and they were just inexpensive promotional knives you can't see here but that little hole right there has a little picture inside there and that's the part that calls it a Stan Hope because that is just a little magnifying glass that uh, shows a little picture on the inside. You can see that the light shines through there. You can't really make it out but there's a little photograph in there and that's why it's called a Stan Hope. Otherwise it's basically a bartender knife so you've got the um, the uh, label cutter over here because at the time when these knives were being made there weren't a lot of bottle openers or there was no crown cork so there was no reason for a cap lifter so you had the uh this label cutter which would cut around the label so you could open up a champagne bottle or any other bottle that had a seal on it and then it has a uh two uh blades a a, uh, a large and a small spear blade or you could say a spear blade and a pin blade and then a relatively long corkscrew and that's your stand hope now um Interesting enough, this was made by Hen and Rooster, which is a Frost company. And Frost also came out with a 100th anniversary scouting knife uh, on the same frame. So even though, um, you know, this is for the 100th anniversary, so BSA 2010, uh, I mean, the knife is a bartender knife. It's for alcohol and everything. But what they ended up doing is, and if you notice, it's pretty much the same knife. It's a little bit different. Uh, but what they ended up doing is they swapped out the um, the uh, cutter, the foil cutter or the label cutter there for a cap lifter. 
which is a pretty cool idea because uh, you could actually use a cap lifter on this thing and they ended up calling it a fountain knife instead of a uh, bartender knife and then once again you have the little thing in there and I think these would be really cool knives. I think a lot of people would like these kind of knives, especially if you were to do a little bit of mixing up on the blades and stuff. Uh, because of that little uh, um, magnifying glass in there where you could show a photo or something like that, it'd be a good promotional knife for just about any company. And I just don't understand why more Stan Hopes aren't out there, Stan Hope bartender knives. Uh, I think it'd be really good uh, to see more of those out there. Um, Another knife I really wish they would come out with, and yeah, it, I know it's a toothpick or it's on a toothpick frame, but it's the uh, single-bladed fish knife. And um, they do make fish knives. Quite a few fish knives are out there, but they're all the two-bladed ones. And I think this would be a really hot one to have because uh, not only do you have the scaler on the top here, and actually the way you scale with this is you actually keep the blade closed and you scale so that the blade doesn't wobble a bunch and you don't ruin up your you don't ruin the uh, blade uh, the, the pivot point on the blade so you could actually scale your fish or anything else on there and more importantly though it locks you got a nice liner lock going on it and it's just uh you know it's your basic uh toothpick but it's a fish knife now it's got the bottle opener and uh you know it just um I don't know, it's a really nice knife. They have, uh, you do have a few five inch toothpicks out there, but you don't have this one out there anymore. It seems like um, they stopped making them back in the 90s or so, and they just never bothered to come out with them again. And I think a lot of people would be interested in this one. This is uh, one by Camillus. I think they're probably the last company to be making these knives, but I don't understand why, uh, like Case or um, Great Eastern or, uh, uh, you know, Schrade or uh, anyone else. Hi there, uh, BDH uh, or uh, Rough Rider or somebody would not come out with this one. Uh, you see here the hook remover on the end. The other thing a lot of people don't realize is the, the weight of the uh, fish knife and this pointy part. If you whack something with it, it's going to, you know, small fish or something. Uh, it's almost as uh, effective as a fish knocker. Whack it a couple times with that, and you're going to put the fish out of its misery with just the uh, tip of that thing slamming down on it. So, because it's nice and pointy, you're going to crack the skull on the fish. Uh, fish bone is not that hard. Anyway, um, I wish they would come out with this knife. Another one that you do see often enough, but I wish they would make more of, is this one here, the Granddaddy Barlow. Um, it's one of those patterns that... I guess it just doesn't sell well enough, but these are really cool knives. And uh, Barlow's are, are getting, are picking up on speed. And I wish we could see a few more Barlow's, especially the uh, the larger granddaddy Barlow's. These tend to be only one blade, but I have seen some with two blades. And uh, often I've actually seen a fish knife with uh, on the granddaddy Barlow frame. That would be really cool, but also a saw blade or any other kind of secondary blade on it would be pretty cool but just to have a granddaddy barlow or more granddaddy barlows out there would be really great um i don't know why it's not being used but i wish it was something else right here i think a lot of people have seen this and this is the uh the coast guard approved rope knife no one is making these anymore and this is one that i i think a lot of people would like i mean uh especially in the day of the cleaver and everything i mean this basically is the cleaver before the cleaver knives came out you got that wonderful big fat ram's head blade on there and uh they have them um they were made both with and without a can opener i could see this with a secondary blade other than a can opener can openers are not as useful as they used to be but could you imagine uh this with a secondary blade of some kind and this uh, nice thing here, this uh, wonderful ram's foot blade, uh, maybe a pair of scissors or uh, just a, a spear blade or a clip blade thrown onto that too. And it's got that nice sway back look to it. So uh, this is the S702 by Camillus, but why no one is making this today is beyond me, especially if you were to go and actually uh, clean it up a bit, 
finish it off nicely, uh, get a nice bolster on there without the exposed uh, pivot point and everything. These are, and you know, why? I mean, it, especially in the day of the cleavers that are out there today, why isn't anyone making something like this? Uh, it's, a, it's a great old pattern, uh, dates from World War II. I think a lot of people would like something like that. And if you notice, you really don't need the uh, <laughs> the nail nick there. Hi, right, sharp knife. I think this would be a, a great one to bring out. Look, it's got a half stop. Everyone talks about half stops too. Cool knife. I, I wish I, I wish more people would come out with this one. Um, the S702. I would take. Uh, I would rather. Matter of fact, of the ones that I've shown so far, the uh, the uh, the Stan Hopes. The uh, one-bladed fish knife and the Granddaddy Barlow's. This would be the one I would like to see first come out. I just think this would be a great knife to see reintroduced into the uh, world of traditional pattern knives. Um, as I think I mentioned in the description, uh, I also wanted to talk about... Oh, before I do that, let me look at something else. Here's one of the knives I, I got a while back. Uh, marbles. Anyone ever see one of these? I wonder. Um, it's a pretty cool knife. And uh, from what I, I have some paperwork on it that says, Hi, Alex. Uh, I have some paperwork on this that says that the blade in here was from Gladstone, Michigan. But um, everything else, it was assembled in China. So it was one of the earlier marbles knives uh, that Smoky Mountain Knife Works put out. And it is a very old pattern that marbles came out with. And it's, I think it's called a safety knife. Uh, what does it say there? Yep, right there, marble safety knife. And what it is, if you notice how it's opening, the blade is tucked inside there. You open the blade all the way up, you close it down, and you got a fixed blade. It's a fixed blade fishing knife. Uh, got your grip on there. There's no way it'll fold because of uh, it's folded up on there. You have to open up the handle to fold the blade. If you see right up here, if I can get the light to show, there's a little lip there that cuts into right there where the little cut is on the uh, choil there. <coughs> Snaps in place, you're closed. You got a nice little hollow handle and your classic uh, old fish blade. The, this is one for cutting fish. You've got the scaler on top and the really cool little uh, clip there and the nice long blade. So. It's just a really cool knife by Marbles. Um, I wish uh, they would pop this back out there. I wish uh, SMKW would bring this back out. It might be that what they said is true, that they had the blades. Uh, it was existing stock blades from Gladstone, Michigan, and then the parts and everything. They just sent them over to uh, China to have them made. And once they were made, they were made, and they just never bothered to make any more of them, um, which is a shame because this is a, a pretty cool knife and I think a lot of people would kind of dig this thing. Another knife um, I have from Marbles is right here, another fishing knife. I guess I got a lot of fish knives. I got one other cool one that I want to show you too that's not Marbles. Uh, and this one is about four and a half inches long. You've got the uh, scaler there, uh, but it's got a interesting lock there on it. And it basically looks like a... Uh, you know, well, it's a one-blade jackknife with uh, for fishing. Uh, nice long pull. Again, you don't really need the pull. The uh, you'd think that that lock would be in the uh, bad spot, but it's pretty. It's it's actually you miss it when you're holding it. So it's not like you're going to be pushing down on that lock and open it and and causing the blade to close. You actually have to move back there with your thumb to close that lock. Uh, the lock up, and uh, yeah, pretty cool knife. It's got a uh, a checkered wood handle, and uh, I kind of dig it. It's a it's a fun knife by uh, Marbles. It does look like a trapper, um, but it's four and a half inches long. Uh, so, and it also is a little straighter. It's it's uh, a, a trapper tends to be a little more serpentine than this, uh, but it has got the uh, up sweep a little bit on the top, but it's straighter along the bottom. So, um, in any case, it doesn't have a spade blade. So. And they do not call it a trapper. They call it a locking fish knife. And speaking of fish knives, here's one a lot of people probably don't see too often. It is by Imperial. 
and you see it, it's a two blade fish knife and you think, well, two blade fish knife, no big deal. You just got your clip blade and you've got your, uh, your uh, scaler here. But what you see on the back is what makes it interesting. This is on a four inch frame, I believe, maybe four and a quarter. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, four and a, yeah, about four and a quarter inches. But this is the cool thing on it. Anyone uh, that's as old as I am will recognize this. This is from before pull tabs on beer cans. This is the old key that you'd hook onto the edge of a beer can and poke down on the top to poke a hole in it. So, uh, and you could use it still today on like uh, those big uh, jars of Hawaiian punch or something, or cans of Hawaiian punch. It's it's a punch for cans. Um, and it falls right in the middle between the two blades. There is no um, spring on it or anything. It just slides in place. Um, and it's just really cool. And the thing is, is they were not around very long because they came out after um, World War II, came out somewhere around the 50s. And by the mid 60s, they were already starting to look at pull tabs to replace the beer cans. And uh, so these knives were only around for a very short time, maybe 10, 15 years before they became obsolete through uh, technology of the uh, pull tabs on uh, beer cans. So it's a pretty cool knife. And as you can expect, where else does it show up? It shows up on a fish knife. You know, it doesn't show up on any other knives. It shows up on a fish knife. And you still have here also as always with your fish scaler if you got a bottle you can still open the bottle too so definitely if you're out on the boat it doesn't matter a can or bottle you can open your uh your beer with this knife so <laughs> it's, it, I'm, I'm telling you it's just one of those really cool things uh that you just don't see every day anymore so thought i'd show that uh and uh this was one of those uh it, it is by imperial uh, which also makes sense to me because uh, back in the day, Imperial had some of the really coolest innovations on knives that I can think of. And this is one of their little innovations. I mean, Camillus did too, but yeah, it does have a little bit of snap, but not much. Still pretty cool. Um, I think I'll leave that out. And speaking of Imperial, these are later knives by Imperial Schrade. And... Uh, it's a couple Swiss Army knockoffs. Um, found out a little bit about these. Uh, I don't show them too often because I don't know much about them. But this one was known as the Captain. And as you can tell, it's a knockoff of the Classic SD. Uh, I think it came out in the 90s. The difference, though, is if you notice, the scissors on it are based off of the... Uh, Wenger line scissors and they are actually good scissors. They work as good as uh, the scissors you'll find on a Wenger knife. Um, it's got the hammer, uh, 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 the guy with the hammer pounding on the anvil, uh, the the, the uh, tank stamp for hammer knives, uh, which was owned by Imperial at the time. Otherwise, you've got your, uh, your little spear blade and you see there the information on it as you notice it says Schrade because at this time um, Imperial was owned by Schrade it was Imperial Schrade and that's the number on it and you see it is made in USA uh, and the file is nearly identical to the uh, the file that you would find on a uh, classic uh, the difference is this is one of the older classics so it doesn't have the screwdriver tip and these knives were very successful because uh, they were basically copying off of uh, the uh, Victorinox knives, which were also extremely successful back in the 80s and 90s. And just about every USA company that made camp knives were out competing with uh, Swiss Army knives because Swiss Army knives were just killing them, absolutely killing them. So the only way to compete was to make knockoffs of Swiss Army knives because that's what people were buying. And here is another one, again, this is by uh, Imperial Schrade. It's uh, known as the um, Century Line. And these knives were not made in the USA, uh, but they also were not made in Japan or China. These were actually made in Germany, in Solid in Germany. And the uh, 
blade steel on them are the exact same steel that were used in Swiss Army knives. So uh, you could not get closer to a Swiss Army knockoff than the Century line. Uh, this particular one is the CN101 Galaxy. It's the only one I have by them. And if you notice, you hear that snap, that can opener. Well, let's let's take a look. The difference is not very remarkable. If you notice, very close to the same. And same with the can opener. I mean, they they were basically just ripping them off. The uh, you do see a little bit of a difference in the um, in the toothpick. It's a little more flexible than the toothpick on a uh, Victorinox knife. And also the um, tweezers are not nearly as good. They are just metal and it's bent and they they are a little a little too flimsy in my book, but they are tweezers. This particular one, like I said, is the Galaxy. Um, it has a pair of scissors, which are very much a ripoff of uh, Victorinox scissors. Uh, they work almost as well. They're not quite as good, but they work pretty close to it. And uh, as much as I would have preferred this to be a ripoff of the Huntsman, it has the uh, fish scaling blade. I wish this would have had a saw instead. This is the one I could find. I mean, uh, they're not easy to find these days. And uh, you hear it, it's got really good snap. I bought this one brand new, smack dab in the plastic. I removed the plastic. And uh, the build quality is uh, really excellent. I don't remember the original prices. I wish I had the box, uh, the, the cover with me uh, because then I would be able to uh, look it up. But they were less expensive than a, um, than a uh, Swiss Army knife. They're a couple bucks less and that's why you were able to get them for cheaper. If you notice there, it says ISC Stainless Germany. And uh, actually when Imperial Schrade was putting these out, they came in multiple shades, multiple colors, primarily red, but they also had uh, green and blue and other colored uh, scales that you could uh, buy for them. And they actually sold scales separately so you could swap them out. Uh, something that you'd really, uh, obviously they do it now with uh, Swiss Army knives all the time, but usually you don't find the scales sold separately. At least I think they were selling the scales separately. I know shortly afterwards they were, and that might have been because uh, uh, when Imperial Shrade uh, tanked out, um, they had a lot of these things left over, and that's when a lot of this stuff started hitting the aftermarket. Uh, build quality? Not bad at all. The, uh, uh, I mean, it's a solid, well-made knife, um, and it should be because uh, they're using all the parts. Or I wouldn't doubt it was the parts were coming. Uh, people have to understand a lot of the steel for Swiss Army knives come out of solid in Germany, and then uh, the blades uh, get shipped to. Uh, uh, Switzerland for final finishing and everything. So what was happening is they're probably using the exact same blade steel as uh, for the Victorinox knives, but they were finishing and polishing them in uh, in Germany. And then what was happening is all the parts of the knife were being shipped back to the United States for final assembly here. So the assembly was done in the United States, similar to some of the things that are done with Victorinox knives, but um, the finishing and polishing and everything else was also being done in Germany, whereas in, uh, for a Swiss Army knife, they buy the uh, steel and solid in Germany, and they do all the work in uh, Switzerland with it. So same German steel, but the difference being this production was actually uh, all the parts were made and everything in Germany and then shipped to the United States for final assembly. Um, finish on the bottom not nearly as good as on a uh, Swiss Army knife, but it's not bad. You can definitely feel the grooves and everything. Um, I don't know, pretty cool knife. Uh, and uh, for me, it's just an important part of, uh, of knife history because uh, these are some of the last knives uh, made by the Imperial Schrade Company before uh, Taylor Brands took over the uh, brand. Uh, some of the very last knives made by them. These uh, started coming out in the uh, early 90s and um, 
when Imperial Trade uh, was finally just kind of met its doom and was bought by Taylor Brands and became Schrade, um, these knives were no more. So uh, anyway, you got that. This is another one where parts Gladstone, Michigan, but uh, made by SMKW after they bought the Marvel's trademark. So in some ways, it's just part of knife history that I'm looking at the way that uh, these knives were around and then kind of disappeared. Um, don't know what else I want to talk about, but I'm not sure if I mentioned this knife last week or not. So I thought I'd bring it out again. And this is kind of interesting. I need to find out a lot of information about it. It is totally unmarked with the exception of this WT up here and over here. And that is appears to be initials that were uh, stamped in there by the owner. Um, there is no tang stamp mark on it. Uh, but what it is, if you notice, is that uh, same metal scales that you see on uh, uh, the military demo knives. But this is a uh, a Stockman, a three-blade Stockman. And rumor has it, and that's all it is as far as I'm concerned, regardless of where I've read it, uh, rumor has it this was a... Uh, a, a a knife used by the Air Force uh, sometime in the 50s when they were uh, getting rid of their old bone-handled and uh, plastic-handled uh, stockmans, they ended up grabbing these. I don't know any truth to that rumor at all. I'm trying to find out if it's true or not. If anyone out there knows a little bit about it, I would love to hear from you. Like I said, it is totally unmarked. I don't even know if it was made in the United States. Um, but uh, it's a solid, well-made knife, and uh, those scales definitely look very much like the uh, the metal scales or, that you find, or, or metal handles that you find on the uh, old uh, military knives. I mean, not much different, is it? In any case, uh, at, with that said, I think I'll let you go. Been rambling for about 32 minutes now. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll talk again soon. I do not know if I will be doing a live chat next Thursday because that is Thanksgiving here in America. And uh, so I might have to do it on a different day because I will be with family and friends that day instead. Uh, not that you guys are not my uh, YouTube family and friends, but... Uh, I think my wife comes first, as well as my children. So thanks a lot for joining me. I, I appreciate you sticking around for the uh, knife chats. And like I mentioned, we've added four coins to the jar. So we are that four coins closer to a Sodbuster Jr. going back out there to somebody very soon. And stick around uh, sometime this week. I will be doing a video about the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Thank you very much. I'll let you go now.